It's the Joel Shit Show featuring Joel Shit. Hi, and welcome to the Joel Shit Show. I'm your host, Joel Shit. Somehow I went from behind schedule, or ahead of schedule, to behind schedule. Well, that's how it works. So I got about five hours of sleep, which actually isn't that bad. So I think my dread of not being rested is a bigger deal than the actual act of not being well rested. Ooh, is that the garbage man? That would be great interference. It is. Okay. Well, we'll be nice to the garbage man. We'll cross the street. It is Thursday. Thursday's garbage day. I don't normally run into this because Thursday's normally a gym day. So, oh, this is great. This woman is waiting for the garbage man. I wonder what she's going to tell them. Maybe she's going to thank her city workers for doing such a fine job. Except garbage hasn't been done by the city for a long time. It's contracted out. This is actually the recycling truck, which is confusing. I could have sworn the recycling came Tuesday. Oh, you know what it is? My recycling comes Tuesday. But for those who live in single-family homes, not condominiums, their recycling comes Thursday. Oh, well. At any rate, let's cross the street. Okay. Last night, I went to San Francisco to review a show for SpinningPlatters.com, and that will be on SpinningPlatters.com later today. If it's not there yet, check later today. It'll definitely be up by the end of the day. So for most of you, it's already up. But the way that logistics worked, I had to go to the city early, very early, because the show started before 9, and I had to do my shift at Yahoo still. So I said, why don't I do my shift at Yahoo in the city? So I drove to Stanford, and then I left at 4 and went to the city. Traffic at 101 is not so bad. I mean, I remember 10 years ago getting in an accident on 101 when someone hit me from behind when I was on my way to a job interview. And we were all going about 20, 30 miles an hour on 101 near 3rd. And they were doing road work, just like now. And there was uh, no left shoulder. I remember blocking the lane and then saying, you know, we should probably pull over because people are stuck behind us. And being 20 minutes late to the job interview, and this is before the days of cell phones. Well, some people had them. I didn't. I didn't get mine until about nine years ago, and this was, well, 11 years ago now. So, that was such a harrowing experience that I did not wear, I forgot to change shoes before I went inside. I had gotten gas in Mountain View that day, and I had been wearing my regular shoes because my nice shoes were uncomfortable. I could not yet afford nice shoes that were comfortable. I had to choose. So I had these Payless shoes that looked nice but were very hurtful. So they would say mean things to me all the time. That's how hurtful they were. So that interview, it went okay. But obviously I could not be 100% focused on the interview and I just got in an accident. Maybe this was a test to see how well I could handle unexpected events. Or maybe the interviewer was like, well, let's see how he handles this. I don't know. I still drive by Barker Blue when I go down the peninsula. In fact, I did last night on my way home and on my way up in the afternoon for that matter. But I only see it on the way down because it's on the frontage road on the west side of the freeway. So I'm only going to see it when I'm coming home when I'm going south. So I got this the city early, around 5. In the Petrero Hill area, 5 is funny, because everyone's trying to leave because they work there, but none of them live there. It's not a bad neighborhood to live in, now that all the industrial areas do not pollute the air like they did 50 years ago. So, it's a nice setup. 
so I found a parking space on 18th near Missouri. Bottom of the hills on 17th, but don't get the wrong idea. It's about half a mile away. And it's all downhill, well, a quarter mile, but it's uphill the whole way back. So at the end of the show, you get some exercise. So I went to Farley's, because Farley's is probably the only place in the neighborhood that's open past 8. It's where all the locals go to hang out, because there are a bunch of houses there, like I said. Now, those people, I don't know where they work. If I were smart, I would live and work at Petraro Hill. Wouldn't even need a car. And if I needed a bus that badly, I'd just take the 22 Fillmore. But it isn't up to me. That's us. I don't know what other people do. So I had me some coffee and did my shift for Yahoo. And it was pretty busy, but nothing I couldn't handle. And Gordon visited for a while, then he went to the show. And then at 9, I went to the show. And I'm going to write about that, spinningplatters.com. This officially is a Farley's highlight. Farley's, good solid coffee place. Not amazing, but there's nothing wrong with them either. And they're open late. That's the best, best, uh, that's the best thing you can say about them is they're open late. But I'd go again if it was going to be after 8 o'clock. They're an excellent place to work. They leave you alone. I you know, wouldn't mind if they walked up to me and asked if I wanted more coffee to... I'd have paid for it, but, you know, that's not the way coffee houses work. You go to the counter to order. I get that. It'd be nice if some of their uh, pastries were half price after 5 p.m., but, you know, maybe they don't have to do that. Maybe they sell anyway. That's just me trying to save a buck. But, uh, sure, I don't know if Farley's is in relation to Phil Frank's comic strip or the cheap brand of candy but in Chicago, but they are what they are. So the time we have today, visit us on the web at joelshitshow.com. Email joel at joelshitshow.com.